Hi there. Thanks so much for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. For the next 30 minutes, this show will only focus on the incredible stories happening all around us. The stories of people coming together for Colorado for each other to make our state a better place to live. So sit back and relax with the entire family and get ready to enjoy the good that's happening right next door. For seven-year-old Addie Hawks, a rare disease made her future uncertain. She was in liver failure. Her family wasn't sure what to do. But then a total stranger stepped in with an incredible gift, as Karen Morfitt explains. Nurses save lives every day, but this nurse did a whole lot more. This just was the right thing to do. She gave life, a part of her liver, to a young girl she barely knew. Dear Miss Pam, thank you for giving me a part of your liver. How both of their lives changed following the donation. That's next on Together. Well, we all know that Coloradans love to give, and it's amazing how some of the youngest have the biggest hearts. Jeff Todd introduces us to three girls in Golden who are giving back in their community and making a lasting impression while doing so. Meet Kennedy, Delaney, and Maggie. We always had kind of had that need to help animals. They love animals and wanted to share the love with other people. Every animal that is a pet should have a loving, caring home. So they came up with a creative idea. Together we pulled off a pretty good uh, fundraiser. How their fundraiser will help dogs and cats find forever homes. That's later on Together. Sometimes coming together for Colorado means saving lives. And staff at the Colorado STEM Academy did just that last month. But for them, it was about more than just being in the right place at the right time. As Jamie Leary explains, it helped that they knew the steps that were needed to save a life. April 23rd started out just like any other day for Hal Lunka, but then the unthinkable happened. I had no idea what was coming. Hal had a heart attack. I remember nothing. Luckily, three people jumped in to help. We'll introduce you to the everyday heroes coming up on Together. We're going to have more on those stories in just a moment. First, I want to tell you about an incredible family offering support to patients at Children's Hospital in Aurora. After dealing with a tragedy, they turned their sorrow into action. They were coming together to help other families get through a difficult time. Kelly Worthman and photojournalist Mark Nitro were at Children's Hospital as the Eaton family treated kids to a special surprise. Hi, how are you guys? They came all the way from Billings, Montana on a mission to spread joy. We'd like to see a big smile on your face. With a wagon full of goodies, the Eaton family made a very special visit to Children's Hospital in Aurora. We're donating uh, 30 iPads to the hospital for uh, patients to use during their stay. It may seem just like a kind and simple donation until you understand why this family is here. We know how much pain some of these guys are going through. Just a few years Years ago, Dallas's brother Ryan lost his battle with cancer. During his treatment, he used an iPad to stay in touch with family and friends, and it was his dream to help other cancer patients do the same. It feels really good to be able to carry on his legacy. At the same time, it's often very hard to go in and almost relive some of these experiences. It's, it's bittersweet, but uh, if we can bring a little sunshine of their darkness, you know, that's what we we're trying to do. Meeting the Eaton family brought a smile to 13-year-old Jesse Graham's face. He knows the iPads will help patients just like him. If kids are afraid of needles and like when they're getting their drug ball and stuff like that, they can use that to get their mind off of it. And that's exactly why this family is visiting as many hospitals as they can. So we hit all the major hospitals in Montana, and then we did Seattle Children's Hospital, and then we did St. Jude's. The visit here helped the Eaton family reach an important goal. They've now donated more than 300 iPads to cancer patients around the country, and they're not stopping now. We want to keep the ball rolling. And as emotional as each journey may be, this family is taking each step side by side, bringing joy to others just like Ryan wanted. I imagine you feel Ryan with you every time you walk through a room to no. do what you're doing. Yeah, we do. We, we know he's smiling. We know that for sure. Absolutely. The Colorado Rockies are coming together to support an eight-year-old with a rare condition. Haley Dawson was born with Poland syndrome. 
left her with no fingers on her right hand, but that has not slowed her down. In fact, Haley's dream is to throw out the first pitch at every Major League Baseball stadium this season. And with the help of a special 3D printed hand, she did just that at Coors Field last week, and the entire team was happy to support her. I got autographs all over here, some right here, one right here, some down here, and I saw. <laughs> Coors Field was Haley's ninth Major League Baseball stop. Next up, Seattle. Well, if you've lived in Colorado long, you know it's the kind of place where strangers come together for each other. In this case, it's the story of a nurse who stepped in when she heard about a six-year-old girl in liver failure. Karen Morfitt and photojournalist Rob McClure have the story of Addie and Pam and an incredible gift. If you want to know what animal seven-year-old Addie Hawks loves the most, you could probably guess. Unicorns. <laughs> Why do you like unicorns? They're really pretty. What isn't so obvious is the fight she's been through and the bond she's formed with a woman she barely knows. Dear Miss Pam, thank you for giving me a part of your liver. Diagnosed with a rare liver disease at just 10 months old, doctors knew Addie would need a transplant. But when was less than clear. We just noticed that she was staying sicker longer. Um, her jaundice had come back and it, had, it wasn't going away. Addie's liver was failing. Pictures taken after the surgery show what normal should look like. Addie's is on the right. She was put on a donor list while also exploring the possibility of a live donor. Mom and dad, the first to volunteer. It was hard for both my husband and I because obviously we want to be able to be the ones to save her, but... Their best candidate was an uncle who works at Sky Ridge Medical Center with registered nurse Pam Acid, who turns out is also the same blood type as Addie. I thought that if that was my daughter, that I would want to give her every possible opportunity. <laughs> if you're willing to do this for my child, then, you know, they, the hospital takes care of all the medical stuff. Pam was a fit. This just was the right thing to do and it was what I was going to do. On January 16th, the two went in for surgery. It just makes me so happy that we didn't have to wait until she was so sick. Both are now well into recovery and closer than ever. She's carrying a piece of Pam with her wherever she goes for the rest of her life. In a way, it's like, you know, she's become family. Oh, I love that. Talk about being selfless. That's just beautiful. We asked uh, Karen Morfitt to sit in with us. We love the story so much. We know it's been a few months since we first featured Addie and Pam's story, so we are all curious how they're doing right now. Well, Karen, I actually had a chance to catch up with Pam, and she says that both of them are doing really well. Mm -hmm. As far as the donation goes, both of them are still very healthy. No complications on Addie's end, and Pam says she's feeling really great as well. And they still stay in touch. They have a lunch about uh, once a month, she said. So <laughs> they're so closer great. than ever. Yeah, that's beautiful. So how has Addie's life changed? Have you been able to find out much about that? I asked Pam that question as well because yeah. I think that's what a lot of people want to know is how did she, you know, get better from right. all of this? And she said just her energy is so much more noticeable. She's outdoors. She's moving around. She's um, in that picture. You can tell she's grown so much even since we've seen her. And Pam says that it's just wonderful. She hopes to be able to watch her, you know, go through life. Yeah, no. and now she's got her life back, right? That's so beautiful. Yeah, she really does. Yeah. And Pam knows that, you know, she had a part in that, but she says really the family was the one that had all of this, this tough time and they were able to overcome that. And she doesn't think what she did is, is that big of a deal. That's how selfless she is. She really is selfless. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. Karen, thank you so much for sharing that with us. We appreciate right. it. Well, enjoying the great outdoors is a big part of living in Colorado. And thanks to people coming together, it'll be a whole lot easier for seniors to appreciate all their fresh air. Being outside is just so invigorating. I mean, I would be outside all the time if, it didn't, if I didn't have to be inside doing things. <laughs>
Well, Lauren Whitney is with us now to highlight some of the great picks that you're snapping while enjoying all that Colorado offers. Finally, the weather has settled down a little bit so people can enjoy spending some time outside. Oh, yes, and we got lots of outdoor pictures. It's been really beautiful outside, so let's take a look at some of those photos. This is from Adam and Michael enjoying downtown Estes Park. Looks like a lovely scene up there, and we obviously know Estes Park is just so mm -hmm. beautiful. And this is Becky Ann Hernandez, a little cooler in Breckenridge when she took this picture. You might be thinking about some cooler temperatures with the heat that we've been experiencing. I, love her hat. I know, so cute. She's <laughs> representing Colorado, and I love the chair behind them as well. And this is the Camacho family enjoying mm. Mohawk Lake. Just beautiful out there. So if you're on about hiking, take some pictures of you enjoying it and send them our way. And this is one of my favorite ones. This is from Erin Regan, and she's storm chasing out on the Eastern Plains. We had some big thunderstorms uh, late in May, and uh, she was out there at a good distance. We don't want you to get too close if you're out storm chasing, but if you happen to catch a good uh, thunderstorm, make sure you send it our way too. Look at that color of the sky behind her. Oh, that was a good one. And she's mm. like, hey, yeah. it's me. She's far enough away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lauren, thanks so much for that. And as always, be sure to share your photos with us. We want to see you out enjoying Colorado with your family or your pets. We love to see those animals too. So send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado, and we will be sure to share right here on this show. Well, three girls are sharing their love for animals with everyone. Coming up next, we're going to take you to Golden and explain how these 12-year-olds came together for some homeless pets. This week on our Together for Colorado calendar, Monday, it is the 10th annual Golf for a Precious Child tournament at the Omni Interlock and Golf Club. Thursday, head to the Bridge Houses Community Art Show in Boulder. All of the art and jewelry there for sale is created by the homeless and low-income adults. On Saturday, enjoy the soiree under the stars. Proceeds go directly to refugee youth and their families. You can find more information on these and other events on the Together page at cbsdenver.com. Well, Eagle Scouts typically come up with projects that make a huge impact in our community. But one local scouts project went so far above and beyond the normal requirements, it was named the best in the country. Michael Aikner spent more than a year raising money to help the Denver Indian Center near Sheridan and Alameda. The building was in need of some renovations, and that's where Michael came in. He raised $20,000, and with the help of volunteers, built a fire pit, put up mosaic artwork, and planted vegetation all along the building. So I felt like I sort of had a opportunity and a duty to really help this community. Um, I felt that it was the right thing to do. He sets an example not only for our youth, but also for a lot of us older people to follow through. Egner won the American Legion Scholarship for the best Eagle Scout service project in the country. That is the first time a boy from Colorado received a scholarship in more than a quarter century. Great job. Well, a group of girls in Golden is coming together to help animals in need of a little more attention. The three were sad to see the closure of the Gold Mill feed store, but in that, they also saw an opportunity. An opportunity that is making a lasting impression, as Jeff Todd explains. And they're all so loving, and so I think we should try to love them too. Kennedy, Delaney, and Maggie have a shared love of pets. Every animal that is a pet should have a loving, caring home. They also try to help out in the community whenever they can. Together we pulled off a pretty good uh, fundraiser. It started with the closing of a business that had been around for decades. When the Golden Mill feed supply closed earlier this year, it had one final sale to get rid of all its product. We asked them, uh, when you go inside, do you want to buy something and put it in our nation box? And a lot of them bought something. The girls sat outside for hours, but didn't know how much the community would pitch in to their drive. We definitely got a really good turnout. We didn't really know what we were going to expect. I was very surprised. Like, I thought there was only going to be a few people, but like almost every single person that came there donated something. Earlier this month, they dropped off two car loads full at the Foothills Animal Shelter. And we had to unload all the stuff. <laughs> Cash, toys, hundreds of cans of wet food, and 15 huge bags of dry food for both cats and dogs. Proud that I got to be a part of it and help. <laughs> well, stay with us as we share more stories of students, firefighters, and police officers all coming together for Colorado. Even the smallest act of kindness makes a difference. It doesn't take much to change a life.
where you can find more information on all of the Together for Colorado stories featured in today's show by visiting our website, cbsdenver.com. A school day can be hectic for teachers and students, but last month at the Colorado STEM Academy in Westminster, things got downright scary. A volunteer had a heart attack. But lucky for him, three staff members knew exactly how to save a life. Jamie Leary and photojournalist Eric Bloomer share their story. I had no idea what was coming. It was just two weeks ago when Hal Lunka underwent a quadruple bypass. Doctors say he shouldn't be alive. This changed everything. Hal volunteers with a program called Junior Achievement. He was on his way to school to teach a workshop, and with no warning, he had a massive heart attack. I remember nothing. I don't even know how I drove there. One thing he knows for certain. On April 23rd, I tried to die, but somebody was there to save me. Three somebodies were there to save him. All of a sudden, he just leaned back in his chair and his head went back. Without hesitating, she called 911 while Les, another teacher, started compressions. Everybody that was working as a team in the, in the calm that was kind of over the whole room. When Les was tired, uh, Nikki too. took was, over. All right, I had to think about, you know, where I had to have my hands and how deep I had to go. But other than that, it was second nature and training that saved Hal's life. All three of us were just standing there watching. We didn't leave. You know, we wanted to be there with him. They didn't know if he would make it. I had a short cry, walked with less, and then the kids came in. From Hal's perspective, Grateful doesn't even cut it. He has a few broken ribs, but realizes he has time and knowledge to give to his six grandchildren, five children, and his students. I'm going to go on a new path. What it is, I don't know. But there's more ahead for me. That is for sure. Well, as you probably noticed, our Together for Colorado stories are a positive, empowering way of reporting the most important stories across our state in a way that keeps the focus on you and your family. And we love sharing these stories with you. We'll take a look at the brand new pollinator garden in North Glen. This is at the E.B. Rains Memorial Park. STEM students at North Glen High School helped design it. And with help from the Butterfly Pavilion, it became a reality that the bees can now enjoy. And coming together to make sure no child goes hungry, Aurora firefighters and police officers help kick off their summer food program. It's sponsored by the Food Bank of the Rockies and Aurora Public Schools. Now together, they provide healthy meals to kids during summer vacation. So you can, too, show us how people are coming together where you live. Post it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the hashtag for Colorado. And I'll be sure to share, be sure to share it on the air. Well, I hope you enjoyed our show today. We look forward to seeing you back here next week with even more incredible stories of how people are coming together for Colorado. Until then, we leave you with a typical scene this time of year. Photojournalist Rob McClure gives us this view of a spring rainstorm in Boulder as showcased from the Mobile Weather Lab.